I don't like having money. It just sits around, doing nothing. So I spent $250 on seven different Pong consoles. Wait, what the hell is a Pong console? Pong consoles are a type of video game console sold between the mid-70s and the early 80s. Instead of using cartridges, they had various Pong games built into the system. Most of these consoles only have one analog control, usually a knob or a slider. They were cheap and easy to build, as they were a budget alternative to the Ataris and Intellivisions of the era. That means pretty much every company under the sun took a swing at making a Pong console. This makes it interesting to see what each company thought was the best design. So let's take a look at some forgotten consoles from a forgotten era. Let's start with this. This is a Unisonic Tournament 100. It came out in 1976, but looks way more modern. The shell looks like it might be made of metal, but it's just painted plastic. You've got your four basic games here, tennis, hockey, squash, practice. It's pretty run-of-the-mill for a Pong console. The controllers are removable, and it looks like it has a slider and a knob, but that knob is really just a button for speed up, whatever that means. The sliders feel pretty terrible actually, and the knob feels like something off of a $5 jewelry box. Over here you've got your basic settings, you've got your player size, auto or manual serve, ball speed, and angle. The power switch is this weird floating square thing which I actually think is pretty cool. This reset button is huge and you can barely even press it down. On the back you'll find the battery compartment, which sucks because they immediately want to escape. Yep, 6C batteries, that's the norm for these consoles, and it's pretty annoying considering pretty much nothing nowadays uses them. And to make matters worse, you'd be lucky if you get an AC adapter with one of these. And I'm not talking about some eBay seller losing it over the years, no, these sometimes didn't come with AC adapters brand new. In fact, this is one of the three of these seven consoles that just didn't come with one. Luckily, one of the other consoles I bought came with an adapter that was compatible with this. This one came with the original box, which is pretty cool, and these deformed children seem to be having a real fun time. And I mean, why wouldn't they be? This console has three realistic sounds, wow. Let's fire up the old space command and see if it really is that fun. It's pretty average Pong, it's nothing special. The left controller is pretty jittery, but I mean, this thing's 46 years old, I don't even blame it. The speed up feature though, that's fun, you just press it and the ball goes faster. Yeah, I can definitely imagine some kid in the 70s absolutely screwing with their friend with this. Overall, this thing is pretty decent, it's, you know, not the best built, but what do you expect? Let's move on to this little guy, this is the Bentley CompuVision. This thing came out in 1983 at the very end of the Pong console era. You can tell at this point that they had distilled a Pong console into the smallest and simplest thing possible. There's five switches and a button on here, pretty much all the settings that the other one had, but minus the angle control. You get two detachable controllers with knobs that actually feel really good, they're very heavy and super smooth. And that's very weird considering the whole controller itself feels like it weighs about half an ounce. The whole console is super light and doesn't feel like it was built very well. But don't worry, none of that matters because you've got textured wood grain on the sides. This one also came in the original box and you can tell they knew this thing was outdated, calling the games time tested. Yeah, okay. Turning it around, there's not much, but it uses four AA batteries instead of Cs, which is actually a reasonable request. In terms of gameplay, there's nothing really special. The controllers are a little jittery, but they're usable. The video signal, however, doesn't come through very clear at all. One interesting thing, though, is that the sound comes out of the TV, where usually these Pong consoles have a speaker built into the system. Overall, the Bentley isn't terrible, but you can tell it was made to be as cheap as possible, and it had to be, I mean, no one was interested in Pong in 1983. Let's move on, then, to something a little bigger. This bad boy is the Coleco Telstar Classic, and it is huge. Look at it compared to the Bentley. This thing came out in 1977, but it looks like it came out in 67. The outside frame is made of wood, and it's actually coming apart at this corner here. They just stuck these controllers onto the console. You can't move them. In the middle here, you have this control panel with classic in the middle, and yeah, it sure does look classic. 
And this thing is pretty basic. You've only got three games and three difficulty modes and that's it. This reset button here feels like it came off a piece of industrial equipment, and I mean this whole thing feels like it was made in someone's basement or something. I mean, just listen to these switches. What's the best place for the power jack? Well, Coleco thinks it's right here, on the top of the console at an angle. Man, they didn't even try. This sticker here for the Telstar logo covers up some of the speaker. Yeah, let's just stick these screws here. Who cares? No one's gonna see them, right? When you're actually playing this console, it feels like a very delicate piece of vintage equipment. The power switch is very sensitive. It needs to be all the way on the on position. The video signal has this weird, hazy streaking effect, and it keeps going up and down. I'm not even sure if this is working correctly. On the bright side though, the controllers are extremely smooth, there's no jitter at all. Overall, this thing, it, it sure is a piece. It's rough and crude, but honestly, I, I love it, it's so vintage. Next up, we've got the S4000, made by everyone's favorite console manufacturer, Kmart. Well, to be fair, it's not actually a Kmart made console, it's just a rebranding of a Radofin TV game. And geez, look at how dirty this thing was when I first got it. This thing has the full suite of settings, like player size, angle, speed, and auto serve. It's got two detachable slider controllers, which feel alright I guess, but they don't really want to go back in the console. It's got this weird 4x4 hole pattern here that actually houses the speaker. Over here you've got your four basic games. And on the back here, we've got a power jack and the remnants of this rebrand over here. It can use six C batteries, but this one actually came with an adapter, which is hilariously small, but it's better than nothing. In terms of playing, there's nothing special here, but these controllers are, are just totally shot. They are jittering all over the place. Overall, it's pretty standard, but this console has very clearly not aged well at all. Next up is the Telematch 4, which looks very suspiciously like the Tournament 100. I mean, look at this, the side profiles are almost identical. And if you thought the Kmart was in bad shape, whoa, there's no battery cover to be found, and it reveals a decent amount of corrosion in here. But luckily, it also didn't come with an AC adapter, so I am forced to use the batteries. These controllers are detachable, and just like the Kmart, they put up a fight when you want to put them back in the console. Look at this brown plastic they have on here. Ugh, the 70s. Over here you've got your settings, basically the same things that we've seen before. You've got a red reset button and a... oh, oh boy. Well, this power switch doesn't have a knob and it doesn't move. Luckily it's stuck on the on position, so there's still a chance this thing might work. And over here you've got your game wait a minute, this is the same knob, this is the same knob. Are these the same console? Wait a minute. No, no, these aren't the same console. They're different on the bottom, and the speaker is in a different place, but you could have fooled me. Well, I guess it's time to see if this thing actually works, I doubt it. Well, unfortunately this thing does not work. I might be able to fix it by unsticking that power switch and getting rid of some of the corrosion on those battery terminals, but... For now, this thing is dead. Next up is not one, but two APF TV funds. This thing looks so cool. Look at that shape, it looks like a spaceship. And the wood grain combined with the metal really tells you that this is from the 70s. Up here you've got three switches for angle, bat size, and ball speed, and these switches are great. They're metal and they just flick around really nice. Then you've got a serve button, which feels just as nice a game selector, and your power button. And then you've got your two controller knobs at the bottom here, unfortunately not detachable, but they feel alright. It looks like it might be two separate knobs with an inner and an outer, but it's just one piece. Unfortunately, out of my two consoles, there's only one little metal knob topper on here. Just to show how unreliable these old consoles can be, these both worked when I bought them, but when I went to record them, one of them didn't come in clear at all, and the other one seemed to completely bug out when I hit the reset switch. To be fair though, when they did work, there wasn't anything really special about them anyway. Overall, I just really love the design of this one, it's super cool to have on your shelf. 
And finally, we have the Pong console to end all Pong consoles, the Unisonic Olympian 2600. This thing has not three, not four, but ten games. This thing has your standard variation of Pong games, but it also has basketball, shooting games, and grid ball, which looks super trippy and cool. It's also the only console I have which is in full color, which for the time, oh, color video games, wow. I mean, this thing even has its own dedicated volume slider. You've got detachable controllers, which are joysticks, not knobs or sliders, which means that you can go in any four directions with your paddle. You even have dedicated reset and serve buttons on each controller. This thing was the Cadillac of Pong consoles. For turning the console on, you don't have some kind of pedestrian switch, no no. This is a dedicated locking power button, which unfortunately gets stuck if you press it the wrong way. There's also the speed inhibit switch, which is, well, I like heavy switches, but it's a different thing when you have to fight it to make it do what it's supposed to do. The overlays for the controllers aren't plastic film or something, they're actually metal. Unfortunately, one of them is bent out of shape and isn't sticking to the controller. In terms of gameplay, this is way more complex than any of the other consoles. Like I said, you can move in all four directions, which is actually really interesting in hockey, where your goalie only moves up and down, but the other two players can move in any direction they want. You also have baskets and it's one player version hoops, which is sort of basketball, I guess? You're just supposed to get it in this hoop? Which, I mean, it isn't really how basketball actually works, but good effort for trying, I guess. Then you've got the shooting games, and honestly, I can't figure out how this is supposed to be played. You move the crosshair around with your joystick, so I don't think it's supposed to be a light gun game. I tried pressing serve to shoot, but that doesn't seem to work. Maybe you just have to be exactly spot on and where it's supposed to be. But my favorite one of these games is Gridball. It, j it just looks beautiful. It's a really interesting concept too. You have six lines with a couple spaces in between them. Each player has every other line, and you're trying to get the ball over to your side. Really, I couldn't be bothered on how well it actually plays. It just looks so cool. The Olympian is definitely the coolest and most advanced console I have here. And, well, that's it. Thanks for letting me show off these obscure 70s consoles, and I hope you enjoyed how weird they are. So next time you're surfing eBay, maybe give these Pong consoles a look. They might be more interesting than you think.